I'm going to explain to you taxes on stocks from a very basic overview as if you knew nothing. And I'm going to speak to you as if you were clients in my office. And I will be making other intermediate level videos and advanced level videos about taxes on stocks. However, this is an entry level video. Since we have a whole series on investing in the stock market for beginners, I thought this would be an appropriate time to release this video about taxes on stocks from a very entry level, very basic level overview. If you didn't know, my name is Brian Kim. I'm a certified public accountant and owner of multiple tax practices. I'm helping you get started in the stock market. And again, this is why I'm making this video about taxes on stocks for beginners. Let's begin. I'm gonna go over frequently asked questions that my clients ask me. Here we go. Taxes on stocks, question one. Will I pay taxes on stocks if I don't sell my stock? The answer is no. If you don't sell your stock and the value increases, that's called an unrealized gain. That's supposed to, if you do sell the stock, that would be a realized gain. You're only gonna have tax consequences when you have a realized gain. In other words, once you actually close the position, so you bought the stock and then you sold the stock for a gain, then you realized the gain, which is why they call it a realized gain. You're only gonna have tax consequences and pay taxes on realized gains. So if you just bought the stock and you hold it and it increases in value, when the year ends, you're not gonna pay taxes on that. It's just gonna be an unrealized gain, gains that you have not realized yet. That's a good question, that's a frequently asked question, but the answer is no. Taxes on stocks, question number two. Will I pay taxes on stocks if I sold my stock for a gain, but I left it in the brokerage account? The answer is yes. If you sold the stock for a gain and you just left the money in your brokerage account, in other words, you did not withdraw that money from your brokerage account back to your bank account. Even though you didn't withdraw the money from your brokerage account back to your bank account, you're still gonna pay taxes on the realized gain. Because again, it's about when you closed your position, it's about when you realize the gain, not about the money movements, not about the money flow from the brokerage account back to your bank account. So the answer is, this is kind of intertwined with question number one. You're gonna pay taxes when you have a realized gain and what you do with the money afterwards, that's up to you. That's not gonna affect the tax situation. So if you sold it for a gain, you realize the gain and the money's still sitting in your brokerage account, you're still gonna pay taxes on it. It's still gonna be subject to tax. Taxes on stocks, question number three. How much in taxes will I pay on my stock gains? This is, this could be a very complex, this could be a very complex answer. It depends on your situation, but again, this is a very entry level and basic level video. In a nutshell, How much you will pay taxes on your stock gains, it's gonna greatly depend on how long you hold that stock. If you buy the stock and then you sell the stock for a gain on within a year, so under a year's worth of time, then you will be subject to short-term capital gains, which is gonna be your regular tax rates. So if you buy the stock and then you sell the stock a year later or after a year, you will be subject to long-term capital gains. Long-term capital gains are much favorable tax rates. Therefore, you're gonna get better tax treatments if you have long-term capital gains. And again, it just depends on how long you hold the stock. So if you, if you buy and sell, under a year, you're gonna get subject, you're gonna pay taxes at a normal rate. If you hold it for a year or more, and then you sell it, and then you get a gain, you have a gain, you're gonna pay better tax rate. That better tax rates because you're gonna be subject to long-term capital gains. 
that's a very abbreviated or simplified version. There's also a thing called the 0% long-term capital gains rates. That's for another video. I actually did cover that in another video about long-term capital gains, but it really depends primarily on your holding period. That's gonna dictate your tax rate that you will be paying on your gains. Taxes on stocks, question number four. What happens if I sold my stock for a loss? If you sold your stock for a loss, that's unfortunate. However, for tax purposes, losses are good. So you do not want to ignore your stock losses because your stock losses are deductions. Deductions are good because that reduces your taxable income. Therefore, don't forget about your stock losses. Your stock losses will offset any other stock gains or investment gains known as capital gains. Therefore, your stock losses are important and don't, don't neglect them. Again, this is an entry level video, so we're not gonna go into the mechanics behind how much you can deduct in all the scenarios about tax loss harvesting. I have another, I would say, intermediate level video based on stock losses, capital losses, and stock loss harvesting. So please check that out as well. But basically, if you do have stock losses, you can use them to your benefit because they will be deductions. So please keep that in mind. Taxes on stocks, question number five. This is our last question. How do I reflect all this buying and selling of stocks on my tax return? Within your brokerage account, you're gonna be buying stocks, selling stocks, buying, selling, buying, selling, making money on this trade, losing money on that trade, and so on and so forth. All this information will be given to you on a tax form called the 1099B, as in boy, so 1099B. This tax form will be provided to you by February 15th after the year closes out. You're gonna take this tax form, the 1099B, and then you're gonna either plug it into your software, your TurboTax or your at-home software. It's gonna be very straightforward. It's like plugging in the information off of any other tax form. Or many at-home softwares, they offer you the auto, where you lo auto log in and then the auto import options where you can download this 1099B data directly from the brokerage account. And another option is if you have an accountant, you just provide your accountant the 1099B tax form. All that, all the information about all your investments, that's gonna be summarized for you, including the interest, including the dividends, including the capital gains. It's gonna be showing you short-term capital gains, long-term capital gains, all the details of your brokerage account activity will be summarized for you on this 1099B. You just need to remember that, remember that you have it, and then make sure you include this information on your tax return. I will make more videos about short-term capital gains, long-term capital gains, and very advanced topics such as NQSOs, ISOs, ESPPs, ESOPs, and advanced investment partnership K1s as well. And please subscribe and check out our Investing in the Stock Market for Beginners videos. If you do want to get started in the stock market, you can use our affiliate link in the description below and you would get a sign up bonus. Free money is always good. Thank you so much. Please subscribe and take care.